wind just right to where it basically just starts just hitting Jonah in the face. Uh, if anybody was outside yesterday, for example, that would be a, a fantastic example. Uh, heat index was 115, I believe. So if, uh, if anybody was outside during the day yesterday, uh, just imagine sitting in that. No shade. You're just sitting in the grassy, sandy hilltop overlooking the city, and it's just heat, just hot, hot heat. And so, jo- and so Jonah is sitting there, and the Lord comes back to him. And uh, he basically starts talking to him again about this. All right, so jumping down to verse 9, chapter 4, verse 9. But God said to Jonah, Do you have any right to be angry about the vine? And once again, Jonah, in all of his melodrama, I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. This guy better watch his mouth. He keeps throwing out the the word die in these sentences. And he's like, I'm so upset that I could die. And it's it's like, oh, you're pushing it, man. So you're talking to God here. He's the guy who can make that happen. He was about to blow up a city. You should probably not. Yeah. But you know, God is a compassionate God, and so he decides to talk to Jonah instead of punishing him for back-talking. I know uh, yeah, those of you who are parents, when, when kids start talking to you in this sort of fashion, it's sort of like tantrum angry fashion, it's not a good idea to kind of feed into that. All right, I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. Verse 10. But the Lord said... You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. I'm going to leave this last part uh, for here. But, all right, so the occupations in the Old Testament were not that numerous. And so you had people who were in charge of tending the land, taking care of cattle, growing food, things of this nature. And so those of you who have really put the work into, you know, uh, even uh, on the small scale, those of you who have a vegetable garden, for example, uh, to really tend to something and make it grow, you become emotionally invested. But the violent question literally just came up overnight, and dropped overnight. Jonah had to do no work for it, and there was shade provided. And so God uses this as an example. Uh, God says that Nineveh has over 120,000 people who have lived and and grown, and even though they don't know right, uh, that's what uh, doesn't know the right hand from their left means. It it means that they don't know any better. And they have many cattle. Uh, And God's talking about the investment of people. Like, is it not so much more concerning to go out and save the city rather than to lament? Because Jonah was upset about this vine. He just was. All right, so the last sentence of verse 10, this is really special. Uh, Summer helped me out with this this morning by discovering that Jonah is only one of two books in the Bible that ends with a question. The other one is Nahum. But uh, the the book of Jonah ends in a question. uh, Very unusual. All right, so 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? And that's, the, and, and that's literally how Jonah's left. We don't know his rebuttal. We don't know what the comeback is. We don't know if Jonah had a better attitude about it. But I, I don't think there needs to be an after section. I don't think there needs to be more to the book of Jonah because... This question is so heavy, and it comes from God. And it's just, when it's over, when, when it's done, Jonah doesn't need to reply an answer because he already knows the answer. He's known the answer since he ran from God in the beginning of the book. And so the one thing I really caution us about with the example of Jonah is our motivations. When it comes to our faith, how are we motivated? Jonah didn't want the city to be saved because he liked being part of a smaller circle. He enjoyed the fact that he was one of God's chosen, he was the go-to guy to fix problems, and he just didn't think Nineveh deserved saving. That's why he was angry. He was infuriated because he didn't think they deserved it. He thought, let them burn, let them you know, just be smitten by God. Let, let the city end. 
And so the one thing I really want to caution everybody about is our motivations and faith. When we go out and we do good works, when we talk to people about our God, I caution you not to be like Jonah in this sense. Jonah was a prophet. He was chosen by God for the specific task so that he could learn this lesson. But what it boiled down to was he didn't want more people brought in. He was totally content with these people have committed their atrocities and let them burn. And he even talks about how I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were going to forgive them when you sent me in. Otherwise, you would have just destroyed them. And so Jonah is left with this anger, this this fueled anger against God and against the city. And God says that the people are so much greater than this vine. The amount of time that I've invested, the families that are in this city, the men, the women, the children, the cattle, the lives that they have constructed. So do not be angry about that. Rejoice in it. That's what Jonah should learn from this. Is that when God wants to wants us to go out and save people, He wants us to rejoice in it. He wants us to have that forgiveness. And the truth is, and you know this, I'm going to say it and you're going to go, yeah, that's true. None of us deserve it. Amen? None of us deserve it. We don't deserve a person to come into our lives and explain what we've done wrong and to say that, well, there's another way if you just turn to God, God will forgive you. We don't, we don't deserve a person like that. We don't deserve fair warning. We don't deserve anything on, on that scale. But God provides it anyways. The world didn't deserve Jesus. We didn't. We didn't do anything. We, you know, we can be as good as we want to be, but deep down inside there's always that resentment that Jonah had. That's why the book of Jonah exists. To know that even when we do good things, there may still be resentment. Even when we go out and we do God's work, there may still be resentment. And Jonah needed this. And sometimes we're put in situations where we need this. Where God sends us into a situation where we're not happy with it. And we just have to power on through. We may not have, we may not be where we want to be right now. But there's a reason we're there. We're there to inspire people, we're there to save people. Jonah was so unhappy, but he saved so many people. Through the simple three days. I wish I could save 100,000 people in three days. That'd be an amazing act. That'd be phenomenal. That'd be miraculous. And that's what it was. That's exactly what it was. And so I just ask you today that if you want to be part of that, if you want the forgiveness that we don't deserve but God provides, if you want the encouragement whether you're a follower or not, if you want to follow us, then I invite you to come forward. I invite you to talk to me. If you're one of us, if you're already a member, and you decide that there might just be something blocking you, there might just be something blocking you from...